Chair, I'll make a motion um, to approve R18-48 as revised here on the dais. Second. Okay, any discussion? All right. Um, would board members might, would you like to vote or would board members like to make any comments prior to voting? Madam Chair, if you don't mind. Yes. So, um, two things that are very important to me. Number one is paying for the growth. Even though I don't vote to approve the growth, some of that's been done by prior boards, um, I do believe that we're responsible for it. And this, this $6.4 million that we're sending over across the street to accomplishes two goals that are very important to me. One, we take responsibility and pay for the growth. And number two, we're paying for those raises. And, um, and so I am fully in support of this. And I uh, thank my fellow board members for, for allowing the change. Okay. Ms. Shelton. Um, I want to apologize to uh, my constituents in Aquia. When I ran for this office, one of the things that was very clear to me as I knocked on doors, and I think uh, it was like 6,000 doors, a little bit over that, then the number one concern was congestion. And I promised all of them and all of you that I would do everything I could to ensure that we address congestion. Well, this year we're not going to be doing that. So I'm not going to be supporting this, although I definitely support uh, giving our schools the best, and are actually not the schools, frankly, giving our students the best quality education they deserve. But I still think that I have to represent my constituents, and I'm sorry that, and I will do better next year to ensure that we do dedicate transportation funds to improve things like Shelton Shop, Brook Road, all the other uh, issues that we have in Stafford County. Okay, uh, Mr. Cohen. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, just to, I had said last week when we were discussing about the tax rate that uh, to me one, one element that was important was the due diligence going through the budget. And I want to thank staff and the members of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, this is a, the first time that I've been involved in this. And the agencies in, on the county side and the staff really did an excellent job. The members of this board looked through numerous issues of spending as well as revenue uh, and looked at different things to see if there were other ways uh, to deal with things and to reform things. And I think that was excellent. And so I think the public needs to know that it may not have been out in public and we didn't ask questions every day, but there were numerous questions of staff. I think they were, some of them are a little, t a little tired of some of us. Um, so th this budget addresses many of the key issues facing Stafford. Uh, to me, planning and for the future is a massively important aspect. And I'm very pleased that it per this budget continues the PDR program, which is important, particularly uh, in our rural areas. Uh, it, a major element of it is retaining staff throughout the county, uh, doing things with the Sheriff's Department, with the Fire and Rescue Department, and even in education, we are seeing a hemorrhaging of employees going to other counties. And I think this is there's a concerted effort. Mr. Foley and his staff um, have made a great effort to try to stop that and to address the fact that we're in a different state. And I, I applaud them, and this budget does that. Uh, we address school safety, which came up at the last minute, uh, unfortunately, because of events in other states. Uh, and I praise the sheriff for his innovative way to deal with the school safety issue, uh, rather than just going to a, a very popular solution, which might take a year to implement, he and his team developed one that could very well happen very quickly, uh, which actually gets the goal done, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for that in the creation of the task force. Uh, yesterday we were discussing uh, a proposal to deal with transportation, which is a need. I agree with Ms. Shelton, um, but it hasn't, wasn't discussed today, uh, so the, we're, we're faced with the budget that we have in front of us. Uh, a couple things that are, I think I need to stress is first on the schools area. Uh, first, and it is not a conflict. Uh, we are not on this body, nor am I voting on specific pay raises or pay rates or pay salary scales. Uh, we are sending over money to the school system. They make that determination. Um, we do not have that authority. We do have the authority to strongly influence, strongly um, encourage, but that is not the same as someone voting on an actual salary. Um, and our school system is hemorrhaging staff, veteran staff across the board. Um, 
from central office into the classroom, into the buses, uh, paraprofessionals, administrative assistants, and so this actually deals with that and gives some assistance with that. Not everybody can get what they want. Uh, there is no money ferry that's going to help us with this. Some of us on this board were wanting to put more towards the capital program to pay down our debt. Didn't get that. Some people wanted to put even more towards school. Didn't get that. Uh, some people wanted more for transportation. Didn't get that. Um, one of the things I cared passionately about was uh, tax relief for the elderly. Didn't get that. Uh, but we can't get everything. And I think that this effort uh, by staff and by this board to try to address numerous issues in a logical, rational way is very much to be applauded, and I think the resolutions are sound, and I really appreciate the forward thinking and the intelligence of our staff in coming up with thinking outside the box to help us with this. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Schnellings. Very quickly, Madam Chairman, I just want to thank staff, especially finance and budget. Uh, you folks have put in so much time on this, and uh, it has been a very arduous process. We spent a lot of long hours up here, and I know you guys have spent a lot more, so thank you. Mr. Cavalier? It, it, Tom said a lot about so many needs that we have, and we don't have enough money for everything, and so we had to make choices. Now, in the end, we, we gave, we almost doubled the original proposed budget, the transfer for the schools. So um, I think we accomplished a lot in that area, and we didn't accomplish as much in some other areas because of that. So um, every year we have hard decisions to make, and yet there, there will still be people that say we, we didn't give enough money to the schools, and expect to hear that again. But the fact of the matter is, is, is this is the number we, we have, and the 2.5% colas on both sides of the street are effectively in place right now with some market adjustments in other areas. So while that's not big numbers, it, it's something better than uh, probably the average of what we've seen lately. So this is all a compromise, and we have to compromise to make th things work. It's compromise is not a bad word, and if you don't compromise, then you're going to come up with nothing. So um, in this case, I think we did what we had to do. Thank you. Mrs. Maurer. So I think we need a little bit of clarity um, on my move from the transportation fund. And uh, it, it, it seems like that there's no money going to transportation, and we do have money going to the Brook Road improvements. Construction's not going to stop. Those monies have already been appropriate, appropriated. Construction's already underway. It's not that we're taking that money away. We still have construction on the Courthouse Road. We still have construction on 610. We still have construction all over Stafford County. I get a lot of those complaints, too. When will the barrels be gone on 610? And uh, by the way, I got an update today, end of May. And uh, so, so it's not that we took money out of transportation. What we did was not increase the transportation fund. And the reason that we didn't do that is that we're in the process of racking and stacking transportation projects that, that haven't been identified. And so setting that money aside when we have other needs that are identified is, is why I suggested making the move. And when that project is done, and when those transportation projects have been brought forth and racked and stacked and justified, then, then we will pivot. And like I said, that capital fund, be it capital fund or the transportation fund, it's all infrastructure to me. And I am critically dedicated to infrastructure. And you will hear more about that when we get into the, the capital improvement program that we have to approve in, in a couple of weeks. And so, so I, I understand, I understand the concern, I understand the, the consternation, but um, we did accomplish a lot on this, on this budget, public safety. When I, when I talked to my constituents, they asked, if you do this tax increase, which was not easy to do, we better see more money for teachers, more money for public safety, more public safety personnel, more teachers. I, that is what they, they drilled into my head. And they have agreed to this tax increase. Um, and, and so have I. And, and this is where um, I feel that this money should go. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dudenheffer. 
I will be voting no on this budget. I cannot support a budget that totally neglects our transportation needs. It's real easy to point to the public and say, look at all the projects that we have done here or that are under construction as we, uh, we look out right now and all the inconvenience we have. Those projects started 10 years ago. So I'm warning the public right now, again, this board, last year they did the same thing, but they're, they're piddling around with the transportation fund. They're not putting money in the transportation fund. The implication from some members here was that next year we'll put money in the transportation fund. Well, we're basically flat. There won't be additional funds and an opportunity to put money in there. So all the roads that are now currently kind of in the pipeline that haven't started, I don't see us being able to afford um, the uh, Enon Road project, the Decatur Road project, all the things that are critical needs, we do not have the money to do those. We will not have the money to do that because we're passing on this opportunity and we succumb to just pressure. I, I can tell you I, um, I was under the impression I had the support of my, my fellow board members. Um, with not neglecting um, the transportation fund, and I voted for a tax increase that under the circumstances was under false pretenses, and if I had to do it all over again, I would not support a tax increase. Um, I also agree with um, Cindy here that the, uh, yes, yeah, schools are a problem. I have no doubt that schools are a problem, but drive on Stafford County roads. All the state funding now is tied to localities having money in the game. You have to propose and have money in order for them to even recognize that you're there. There's matching fund money, there's the smart scale money, and we're gonna fail in those um, in, in the future. And so when these current road projects get finished, that's when they'll start saying, oh my God, we didn't, we're neglecting transportation. So it takes a long time. And uh, I, I won't be supporting this budget for that reason. Okay, um, I would just like to say that uh, we've, we've had a lot of budget work sessions on this budget. We've had two budget work sessions specifically with the school board. Um, you know, we are addressing salary increases with the schools. We're giving them $6.4 million more dollars um, total, and we're also addressing the um, school protection officers with four of their school protection people that some of my other colleagues have mentioned. Um, we are finally addressing some of the issues in social services. These people have woefully been behind the median for a long, long time and have been neglected. Um, their caseloads that they have experienced over the last 10 years are just have been unfair. And we've lost people. Um, and we, we were way behind. And it was time to address those issues. We're also increasing uh, the sheriff's department and as well as fire and rescue. Um, volunteer uh, fire and rescue, volunteer firefighters, those numbers are decreasing throughout the nation. And as you all know, we have a hybrid structure between volunteers and career. And um, you know, it costs 1.2 million to put a career staff in a fire station. Um, so, you know, it this was a tough budget period. We don't have enough money for everything, and we tried to address uh, public safety and education as well as some of our needs in the social service area. Um, and I, I, it is unfortunate that we are not able to put money in transportation. I understand where Mr. Shelton and Mr. Du Mrs. Shelton and Mr. Dudenheffer are coming from, and it's something that we're going to have to work on as a board. It is a priority, and I think we can get there. We're just going to have to figure it out together um, as a board. I do appreciate all of your positions. And with that, um, I would like everybody to please vote on, let's see, our... 18-48, please cast your vote. Tally the vote. Uh, the motion passes five to two.